everybody. Thanks for watching. And just a quick reminder that Saturn, Satan, and God in Nature of Reality Part 7 is now available. If you are never pay again member, it is available on the site. If you are a pro member, it's available on the site. Also, it's available for DVD and digital download. Wasn't going to put it out, but I know a lot of you guys have all the DVDs, one through six, and all the downloads. So I know you want to add this to the collection. So it's available on Podia. The link is in the description for DVD and digital download. Also, it's a lot of people who have never paid again membership that you guys have not updated your account because you haven't registered. So Podia is different from Merkaba Academy. You may be registered on Podia. It doesn't translate over to Merkaba Academy. You have to register on Merkaba Academy. So a lot of you guys are probably wondering why your site hasn't been or your, uh, you know, you haven't been updated or why you can't log into Merkaba Academy because you have to register. Even if you're not paying for Merkaba Academy, just register on, on Merkaba Academy because if you do get the membership, you're already in the system and it'd be automatically updated. So you're not waiting. So this is what, what's happening. If any of you get the Never Pay Again membership, which by the way, I'm keeping it up until Monday. I got your emails. I know first of the month passed and I had to sell up during the first of the month. And you know, a lot of people wanted to wait to buy it. So Never Pay Again membership is available right now for this reduced price until Monday. So make sure you guys take advantage of it, but make sure you register first if you are not registered on Workable Academy. So I know it's a lot of you guys who are new to the channel who asked about what Saturn Satan is. Part one and two is available on you know YouTube, but um, you guys can get all seven videos. I will make it available right here uh, so you can you know get caught up and understand what's going on and watch from the beginning. It's a deep series, so if you want to get caught up, it's available as well all seven videos. So now get into this video and uh, you know, that's basically the mystery of Saturn, which we're getting into in this series on what that's all about. And it really originates with the Garden of Eden story as we get into the first video and understanding, you know, really getting people to think outside the box when you try to understand what's taking place in the Garden of Eden story. And we know it's all esoteric, you know, it's not to be taken literally, but it points you to so many different things, you know, raises a lot of questions because, you know, just Genesis itself and talking about, you know, Adam and Eve. And we have in Genesis one in the image of God created he, him, male and female. So we have male and female being created in Genesis one. We have Adam and Eve being created in Genesis two. And we are told they are the first people created. And then we have to go by the book. You know, nowhere can we find throughout all the information we have on the Bible that, you know, it's a continuation story, you know, because it says male and female created he, him, male and female. It doesn't say, oh, he made female from the rib of another man. We know female and we are told female. It's being, it's being created through, you know, Adam's rib. So this is two different stories as, you know, we get into, but also it's just the mystery of, you know, the garden and what's taking place there. And as we get into in Saturn, Satan seven, you know, the golden age and what that's about, that's what the garden of Eden story is alluding to the golden age of Saturn. So, you know, in the garden, you have to pay attention to the role, you know, God and He's deceiving man when you really pay attention. He actually lies to them. He says, hey, if you eat off the fruit, you'll die. And the serpent says, no, you know, you will not die. You will become as God, basically. So this happens and, you know, they're cast out. So you got to really accept what's being said in that story. And it's not, you know, the way it's, it's taught in church. Just read the book. So this is supposed to be an all-knowing, all-powerful God. And then, you know, he doesn't know the serpent is in the garden. He doesn't know that they bit the apple. He couldn't find them after, you know, they bit the apple. He asks, you know, where art thou? And if God knows all and knows that this serpent exists and is, you know, cunning and crafty and basically against him, that you would think he would put the chair bones with flaming swords in front of the tree or, you know, in the entrance of the garden to basically protect it from, you know, the serpent. But this isn't done until Adam and Eve, you know, bite from the fruit. And then the cherubims basically throw them out. And again, it just raises more questions because God's supposed, he's supposed to know all. So he should know that the seed of Adam and Eve would be corrupted and evil. And he gets this confirmation when Cain kills Abel. And it's like, okay, there's the proof that 
because this happened, supposedly, you know, man is corrupted. Then you have Cain kill Abel. And that's telling you right there, hey, I basically need to start over. So you would think before the flood, Noah's Ark and all these people, you know, being created that he would know that, you know what, I should just, you know, get rid of Adam and Eve and start over now before I create all these, before they create all these people and, you know, things get out of hand as we see when we continue to read Genesis with the sons of God coming into the daughters of men and giants and so on and so forth. But, you know, again, it's questions. Then the biggest question is, okay, well, the serpent is basically telling the truth. So if they ate off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and supposedly if they eat off the tree of life, they're going to become as God. What do we need the rest of the Bible for? You know, what is the point of the rest of the book? We need to get that tree of life. Because if we do so, we become as gods, which when you understand the story, clearly this being or this God that's in the garden can't be the God, the creator of all. Something is up. And it's one of the reasons it's saying in the Bible, I am the Lord, your God. And he's commanding these people to do shit against the people that's already there that he supposedly had created. So you have to wrap your head around the esoteric part of the story. And this is what we get into in the Saturn Saint series it's a lot. I have a lot of videos on this, but I get into a lot of the esoteric uh, teachings from not just the Bible, from a lot of, you know, the Book of Enoch, a lot of different things. But they culminate in part seven to where now you'll see, you know, we'll go back into the Book of Enoch. You go into a lot of the old uh, old teachings and make this stuff come together. Another thing is you got to go to real history and understand what supposedly have should have been taking place around this time. So we look at the ancient world and they wasn't worshiping this biblical God, of course, because there was no religious books out for them to know that he exists. So if we go by the Bible story and this God supposedly exists and he is with the Hebrews who are going around and conquering, everybody should know who the Hebrews are and they should have touched these ancient civilizations who were basically worshiping, you know, these mythological creatures or planets, which is what we get into in part seven, because it's a big deal, you know, Jupiter, Saturn, and there is clearly the worship of Jupiter and Saturn, Zeus, Kronos, all of these beings long before anything biblical. And this is what you got to understand because we just want to believe, hey, wait a minute, Moses wrote these uh, books long ago before all this stuff supposedly had happened, but we have no proof of that. Also, we got to take it to the account that Moses was dead. So who was writing after he died? And that's another thing. So, um, you know, we got to look at that and say, well, it's no way these people could have known this stuff happened. And then just the way we get the, the books where it's passed down, uh, we can't prove it. It's just all hearsay. So from proven history, you don't really get the biblical uh, manuscripts until, you know, first, second century BCE. And, you know, we have the Septuagint, of course, which is Greek. And this is. This is where it starts that we can prove. We can't prove a Hebrew manuscript existed or the Hebrews translated it into Greek. We don't have no proof of that. But we do know for sure that these stories in this Greek mythology existed long before any of this. Before Kemet fell, these stories existed and we don't have anything biblical that predates these stories. So you take that into account. You take into account that we have this worship of Jupiter, Saturn, you know, Zeus, Kronos, what have you. And how it corresponds to the Bible. So you can't ignore these things. So talked about the Garden of Hesperides and how it, you know, resembles the Garden of Eden, or I should say the Garden of Eden resembles the Garden of Hesperides. That existed first. That story was there first. It's not that much of a coincidence that that story resembles the Garden of Eden story. And um, yeah, Pandora's box, even Apple. I get into this. Samson, Hercules. All this stuff is Greek mythology. And then we got to look at that. The Greeks gave us this. So, you know, it's so much wrapped up in the Saturn Satan series, um, the Book of Enoch. It's another thing we get into because we have to look at why was this story created and why is it so different from, you know, the biblical story in the Bible. And it's esoteric for a reason. It's created because it fits in. And that's another thing we get into in part seven. You got to know when to go into the Bible and then go into these esoteric teachings because they all go together. 
The problem is we can't fathom that because this is stuff that we consider to be created later. And we're like, well, the people who gave us these books, the Bible, the so-called prophets, cannot have considered these other books because they're so different. Also, Gnosticism plays a huge role in this and understanding who the demurrage actually is. And we get into that in part seven because it's, it's a big deal. It's huge. And you got to understand that relation from demurrage to Sophia and, you know, Saturn to Jupiter. What is the connection? It's a huge connection. And then, of course, Jesus, Satan, and also Mary, Saturn. This is, it's a huge connection with all these things that we got to consider. And you can't, you can't really get into Saturn, Satan, or Saturn, Jupiter without the Gnostic text because they give you real insight into that connection, which we get into in part seven, to understand what the marriage is and the role and, and what does it mean to be the demurge and how we got to look at that and say, well, wait a minute, you know, Saturn is considered evil and Saturn is Satan. No way around that. So there is this worship of Saturn and Saturn is being looked down upon. But if you understand who the God is in the Old Testament is, it, it raises questions because now it's like, well, wait a minute. Remember, the golden age it's the age of Saturn, as I talked about before. The, the sun that it's talking about throughout the Old Testament is Saturn. Every ancient worship of the sun, what we think we're talking about this sun that we have, they're talking about the Saturn. So we got to understand what it's talking about when it's talking about the golden age. And it's the same across the board. When all of the ancient civilizations is mentioning the golden age, it's the golden age of Saturn. There was no murder, no war, no death. It was bliss. And this is where the Garden of Eden story is picking up from, but it's a lot more to that. So, yeah, the Saturn Satan series is a lot. It encompasses a lot. It really gets you to think outside the box and it really asks, it's, it asks those questions that a lot of people just don't know to ask because they don't understand what, uh, what those, what these things are pertaining to. So the tree of life, you know, the flower of life, you know, the, the knowledge of good and evil, what that, really is about because you got to understand when it was cast out of the garden, they are now subject to a dualistic life duality. And that's what it represents. Now, before there is no choice, everything is fine. You know, golden age, you don't have to deal with any, any, uh, you know, yin yang choices. Everything is just blissful. It's fine. There is no consequences to actions. Because there really is nothing to worry about. There's nothing that's going to set off a chain, of re chain of reaction that's going to cause the downfall of man. Everything is just good. And if you can fathom that. But the fall, now you're subject to duality, dualistic reality of, you know, of good and evil, you know. So choices to make. And this is what we get into. So, uh, you know, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch. I want to make this real quick so you guys get into the video. Um, yeah, see you guys next video. Make sure you guys are registered on Workable Academy. And yeah, if you haven't seen the first two Saturn Satans for all the new people, it's available on uh, YouTube. And as I said, the whole collection is available. Make sure you guys take a look. And it's deep. It's going to have your brain spinning, but it's a lot of information that's going to connect a lot of dots for a lot of people that's just starting out with this information. So yeah. Thanks for watching.